Hello fellow cyborgs and welcome to another Hindsight is 2020 video where I talk to you about some of the books that I have recently reread. Today I'm going to talk to you about the five poetry collections that I wanted to reread this year and that I did reread. Let's go in the order of least to most enjoyed. This is Love and Misadventure by Lang Leave and this is filled with so many short poems, which is good. I like short poems. I really do. I think they can pack a punch, but unfortunately these did not pack any punch for me upon rereading. The theme within all of them is love and romance, and I'm just like over that and I'm not interested in hearing about it or connecting with it at all anymore. And overall, I just didn't think that these poems did anything for the most part, and they seem to be too much in a personal journey for it to really connect with the reader, but trying to be vague enough so that it can connect with as large of an audience as possible. So I first gave this five out of five stars, but now I have demoted it to two and I won't be keeping it on my shelf. Then we have A Short History of Crazy Bone by Patrick Friesen. This is a one long poem but divided into different poems that are numbered and this is about Crazy Bone who from what I can tell is a homeless woman just living her life. For the most part these don't tell a narrative and the language that it uses is very lyrical but to the point of vagueness where I didn't really know what was going on for the most part and when I first read this, I found that magical, but upon rereading it, I just felt kind of dumb. I don't like feeling dumb. So I did demote this from the original five stars to three, but I still want to keep this on my shelves and maybe read it again in the future. There are a number of poems in here that I really liked. Let me see if I can find you one that isn't too long. All the photos buried like seeds or stars, the shadows of them and the light, like forgetting stories all winter, the long winter of burials, and who knows what comes up in April. A fox slips into its den, leaving nothing but a smell, and the thought of an absence. They are all dead, awaiting resurrection, in the other world and in this. So it's nice, but I don't know what's happening. And these poems aren't all metaphoric. There is some, like, this is actually what's happening, but it's never, like, so set that I actually get what's happening. But the thing I wanted to share with you is I was just incredibly amused by the original review I wrote of this and then my current review, so I will read those to you. So in 2015, I said, Whimsical, toes in the earth, ignored wisdom and ritual, crows and trees and sky and water. Crazy bone could be you, could be me, but to most she is a nobody. But she's really a somebody who lives on the borders of places, who sees things and remembers and asks the questions so many of us are afraid to say. I loved listening to her words. And then in 2020, I said, I don't really know what's going on here, but some of the poems are quite beautiful in their snapshot imagery. I'd like to analyze this more deeply in the future. I think... In 2015, I was still close enough to my college graduation date that I could put out review work like that. But these days, uh, it's a little embarrassing. Next, we have Life on Mars by Tracy K. Smith. I really enjoyed the first half of this poetry collection, which is similarly to how I felt when I first read this. But the second half, I don't think it lived up to the first half. When I first read this, that didn't really bother me. I found the first half to be strong enough to carry both parts and I gave it five out of five stars. But upon rereading, I think that second half feeling very different from the first did not merit five stars. So I ended up giving this four upon rereading. But I still really enjoyed this mix of cosmic poetry with Black Lives Matter sorts of issues, even though she doesn't use that terminology in here. And also mixing that in with remembering her father. This is still one of my favorite poetry collections and I look forward to rereading it in the future and maybe finally someday getting to more of Tracy K. Smith's poetry collections because I still have only read this one. This is The No You Never Listened To by Maggie Royer. This is a collection of poems specifically about rape, surviving rape, and the aftermath. This is an own voices book and that is part of why I really, really appreciate this. This is a really extensive collection as well. There are many, many poems in here talking about all the different psychological mindsets that a rape survivor goes through in the process of healing or just feeling a little bit normal after the fact. I didn't love all of these poems and some of them felt to be 
similar to one another, especially within each section, like one dealing about anger, one dealing about grief, etc. But overall, I think that this is such a powerful and important collection that I did not demote it. I gave this five out of five stars when I first read it, and I continue to rate it five out of five stars. Highly recommend, really enjoyed, as much as you can enjoy poems about this content. And then finally, we have the selected poems by Emily Dickinson. This is just, I don't know, 50 pages or so of her poems. What I love most about Emily Dickinson's poems is that they are short. Most of them will fit on one page. I really like that when you can see the entirety of a poem all in one page, even though this Dover Thrift Edition will split them up because they don't care. And I also really like how these poems make me feel smart simply because, you know, they're older, but they're actually not that difficult to read or pick apart. I think I've decided that I do want to upgrade my edition because this just is the, the cheapest thing ever, but it's difficult to shop for a poetry edition online without actually seeing how the text is laid out. So if you have any opinions on collections of Emily Dickinson's poetry, I would really like ones where they don't cut up poems across multiple pages if possible, as far as formatting goes. And if you know of any annotated editions, I haven't seen any there, but I would love to hear somebody else talk about her poems rather than me have to do all the work, frankly. So if you have any recommendations, let me know in the comments down below, but I gave this five out of five stars when I first read it and I still enjoyed these poems quite a bit. So I've given it five out of five stars upon rereading. So those were the poetry collections that I have recently reread. They came out about the way that I thought when I was looking at these collections. Most of them I wanted to read again because I knew that I would still enjoy them and a couple of them I thought probably didn't deserve to have a five out of five star rating anymore. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have a favorite poetry collection. Tell me why. Tell me why I should try it. And until next time, thank, thank, thank you for watching and continue to be lovely.